Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth kit. When I got started doing these Metal Earth kits, I mainly focused on ships because I'm a big fan of ships. The Star Wars ships, the Star Trek ships, any other ships I can get my hand on. I'm just really fascinated by the science fiction, by the artistry, by the ships. I also do have a respect for older stuff. Seafaring vessels. So what I've got here today is the Golden Hawing. I thought I would throw this together. I've already done the Black Pearl. This ought to look nice beside it and go nice with the collection. So let's open this up and see just how difficult it is. The Golden Hawing. And look, it apparently has already been opened or at least came open. We have one sheet, two sheets, and the instructions. If we open up the instructions, we have the somewhat older style. The yellow sheets is all one piece, kind of top and bottom. You've got the top quarter that has the usual line drawing, the little bit about folds, bins, tabs, insertion holes, a bit about you know those pliers. The key or legend, you see a blue circle in the directions, it means to bend a tab over. The green triangle in the directions means to twist a tab. And we have our two sheets here and the little map for the parts. Basically, the numbers point to the different parts so you can find them on the sheet. Then we jump over to this quarter and begin the assembly flow chart with its usual part one, two, three, four. You get to this solid line, you jump down to the bottom quarter, and continue on, five, six, seven, eight. Jump to this quarter, nine, ten. And then we flip over, and we have top quarter, 11, 12, and over here, 13 and 14. Down the bottom quarter, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, and the last quarter, 20, and we're done. The tools that I'll use to build these kits, these are the basics, although it doesn't seem that basic. We have a fairly general set of tweezers. We have some other more specialty set of tweezers, a thinner set. I have one that has a very pointed end. This one also had a pointed end, but I've ground it down just a little bit, and it's great for grabbing just the tabs and tight areas. I have a couple of pliers here. One is a longer needle nose. One is a flat nose. These are smooth inside. There's no ridges, so it doesn't damage any of the parts when you hold on to it. And a pair of clippers or flush cutters that are real good for clipping the parts out of the tree, which is much easier and better than trying to twist and break them out. When it comes to shaping parts, I have an assortment of different things to use. I have dowel rods that I've used for quite some time. A couple of them have had the ends sharpened with a pencil sharpener, which are great for making cone shapes. I have an inexpensive drill bit set with a lot of different sized bits to help with forming cylinder shapes. I also have a couple of step mandrels. I'm not saying you need all of this, but these are different tools that I've acquired and I kind of go back and forth depending on the situation. Round nose pliers or ring pliers, as I've heard them called, can come in quite handy. These have rounded tips and you can use these to shape some of the more unusual or smaller areas that are hard to get with the big fingers like I have. So this is great for curving and, and doing odd shapes. Also, for reaching into very difficult, deep areas to twist tabs, I occasionally pull these out. I can use them to put small parts in, lock them so that they won't open, and then I can guide the part into place. It can be nice to have a set of like dental pick or some sort of pick, a very thin steel where you can reach in and adjust tabs. Sometimes you're putting apart two parts together and there's multiple tabs and one of them doesn't line up. You can use this to reach in there and push and pull back and forth or whatever you need to do to get that last one lined up. So these can be very handy. 
So I've got some tools along with the instructions and the metal sheets. Let's put it together. That last little bit on the mast is tight. I bend the two tabs on the flags in opposite directions to keep them in place. The tabs that hold on part 10 are hidden in the deck. Do your best to bend them up as close as you can to the bottom of the tab. This will help them line up and fit better into the slots. The masts were a challenge to get lined up. I started at the front, got those in, twisted a couple of the tabs, then worked on the middle. It took me several minutes to get the middle ones lined up. It started and twisted, and then on to the last. The bottom of the crow's nest warped both times. I had trouble getting the tabs to line up. I had to pull both of them back off and flatten them out and try again. When putting the sides of the ship on, I twisted some, not all the tabs, just enough to hold things still. When I got the two sides together, I went back and folded over the rest of the tabs, then untwisted and folded over the tabs I had twisted.
I kept underestimating how thin and easily some of the parts would bend in the wrong place. This video has been edited down. I've not shown all the different attempts, adjustments, or retries of this build. I also clip out parts where I am studying directions, searching for and clipping parts, and sometimes repetitive steps. It may make this kit look like it comes together easier than it did, but there are a lot of bending and adjusting of parts to make things fit. Work slowly, be patient, and take your time. Ladies and gentlemen, the Golden Hind, another old sailing vessel, the first to, first English ship to circumnavigate the world, I believe. It is a neat little ship. It'll look very good beside the Black Pearl. It is not a terribly complicated build for as few and as simple parts as it has. It makes up for the complexity of getting everything put together. These little crow's nests, as I mentioned, were a complete pain. You know, there's so many small thin wires around it, it's, it's impossible to not accidentally bend something out of place. Getting into the necessary areas to attach the side pieces was a bit difficult, and I didn't quite shape the body right. I could use some more practice on that, but practice makes perfect. You know, the point of me doing this and making a video out of it is to help people to show them how not to make some of the mistakes that I make and how to avoid certain problems and I can't do that without making them and showing some of them to you. I'm going to go put that on the shelf. If you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.